This video is on similar figures, proportions, and similarity. What is proportional? Ratios of proportion, if they represent the same relationship. One way to see if two ratios are proportional is to write them as fractions and then reduce them. If the reduced fractions are the same, your ratios are proportional. So for example, if I take three divided by six, is that equal to one over two? The fraction we have is three over six. Can I simplify that or reduce that so that it equals the same as one over two? Sure, three goes into three one time and three goes into six two times. So three over six is equal to one half. Another way to look at this is if I take a bar and I cut it up into six parts and three of those are shaded. So something like this where I have one, two, three, four, five, six parts right there. And again, three are shaded right there. So these three are shaded. And the question is, is this bar equal to one half? Well, if I take the same length of this bar right here and I cut up into two parts, right? So something like this, and one of those is shaded, are the three orange bars right here the same as this one bar of green? Yes, so that's why they are equal to each other. Let's take a different fraction. If I take four over 12, is that equal to one third? Well, same thing. Let's take a bar and divide it up into 12 parts. And of those 12, four of them are shaded right there. So something like this, I have is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve parts right there, and four of those are shaded. Is this right here equal to one third? So that means I would hit take a bar, divide it up into three parts, and of those three, only one is shaded. Something like this. So we can see that this is equal to this right here lengthwise. Therefore, four over 12 is equal to one third. Let's take another fraction, six over 15. So if we take a bar and divide it up into 15 parts and six of those are shaded. If I take a bar that is divided into five parts and two of those are shaded. So we can see that this is equal to this bar right here. So therefore this fraction six over 15 is equal to two over five. Example one, so let's look at 11 over 22 is equal to X over two. So what we're looking at is this fraction right here and we're trying to figure out is that equal to this fraction right here? But the part that we don't know is this part right here. So we're gonna do some algebra right here. What we're gonna say is what is that number that divides evenly into 11 and also 22? And it has to be the same number. That number would be 11. 11 goes into 11 one time and 11 goes into 22 two times. So it looks something like this. So once I have this right here, this is very similar to this right here because both of the denominators are two. So if that's true, then what is X equal to? X is equal to one. Let's look at example two. So the fraction is 15 over 25 is equal to three over X. And again, we're trying to solve for X. So if we take this number right here, the fraction, we're gonna ask ourselves, what number divides evenly into 15 and also into 25? Five would be it. So five goes into 15 evenly three times. Five goes into 25 evenly five. So if I look at this fraction right here, it looks very similar to this fraction. So what would X equal? X will equal to five. But what if a number does not divide evenly? So for example, 10 over 20 is equal to X over 22. If I do the same thing as what we did previously on examples one and two, I can say what number goes in evenly into 10 and also 20? 
Well, 10 would go into it, both of those evenly. 10 goes into 10 one time. 10 goes into 20 two times. Well, if this number was a 2, then that would be your answer right there, that this would equal to 1. But it is not 2. It's actually 22 instead. So if a fraction is equal to another fraction and you can't simplify that, then what you're going to do is an algebra where you're going to multiply diagonally from those fractions. So we're going to set 10 times the 22, and we're going to set it equal, because we're still saying those fractions are equal to each other. And we're going to multiply diagonally on the opposite ends right here. So that's going to give us 20 times x. So let's simplify that. So 10 times 22 will give us then 220, and 20 times x is equal to 20x. So if we continue the algebra to solve for x by itself, we would have to divide by 20 on both sides. So if we divide by 20 on both sides right here, x is equal to 11. So if I substitute this number back into here, we're saying that 11 over 22 is a fraction. But if I look at this again, 10 over 20, is that still equal to 11 over 22? That's a weird idea. But if I simplify this or make this smaller, we said the both of these numbers go into evenly was a 10. And 10 goes into 10 one time, 10 goes into 20 two times. So if I simplify this fraction, it is half. But if I have 11 over 22, can I do the same idea? Does something go into 11 and also into 22 evenly? It would have to be 11. So 11 goes into 11 one time, 11 goes into 22 two times. So this also is equal to half. So this fraction, which is technically a half, is equal to the other fraction, which is also a half. Let's look at another example. So same thing, x over 6 is equal to 20 over 4. If we multiply diagonally, we have is then x times 4, and we set it equal. Make sure you always put an equal sign right there. And we multiply diagonally on the other side, the 6 times 20. That's going to give us then 120 and 4x. To isolate x by itself, we want to divide both sides by 4. So if we divide by 4 on the 120, x is equal to 30. So again, if I substitute this 30 back in here, 30 divided by 6 goes in evenly, and that becomes 5. 4 goes into 20 evenly, and that also equals to 5. So both of these fractions are equal to each other. Okay. Now, let's use that proportion idea, and let's put it into a figure. So if I put the two triangles together, we're saying that triangle 1 is equal to triangle 2. But notice that there is an x right here in triangle 2, and we're trying to figure out is what is that length of that leg of the triangle. So when we're given a figure, we have to compare it to each other. So when we compare it to each other, we're saying that whatever one side of that triangle of triangle 1 is also the same, to the other side of triangle 2. So for example, if I like look at this side right here, this leg of this triangle right here where the 12 is, this side is equal to this side of the triangle, right? Because you wouldn't compare it to this side of the triangle because that does not look like this right here, okay? So that's what this is right here. We're saying that one fractions or one side of that triangle is equal to now the other side of the triangle. So the other side would have to be this number right here because that's given. So this is the 10 and is equal to this side right here because it's the same side right there. So now let's set this fraction up. It looks something like this. Well, we took the 12 of triangle 1 and we set it over the triangle 2, which is the x right there, and we're saying it's equal to the other leg of the triangle, which is the 10, over the 5 right there. Okay, So this is the setup right here. Now, once I set this up, then it's a similar to the previous example, 
We're going to go ahead and multiply diagonally to each other. So then it's 12 times the 5 equals, and then we're going to multiply the other diagonal side, which is then the 10 times the x. So if we simplify this, 12 times the 5 right here is equal to 60. 10 times x is 10x. If we divide both sides by 10, x is equal to 6. So we're saying then this side of the triangle is equal to 6. Let's look at a different example. Example 6 is the same idea, but we're going to call it figure 1, figure 2, which looks very similar to a parallelogram. So if I have figure 1 and figure 2, we're going to compare it on the same side or same leg of this parallelogram. So I can see that the 4 right here should be compared to this x right here. This 10 right here should be compared to the 70 right here. So if we set up our fraction, it's going to be 4 over the x right here equals the 10 over the 70. Now also be very careful. If you start on this side right here, the 4, which is the figure 1, make sure you also compare it to the other one of figure 1. So this is the setup right here. Figure 1 divided by figure 2 is equal to figure 1 over figure 2. So you can't put the 70 on this side and then the 10 on this side because then that's going to give us a different number because remember we're going to multiply diagonally that's going to give us a totally different calculation so be careful of that. So let's go ahead and multiply diagonally so we're going to go ahead and do 4 times the 70 equals and then the other diagonal side will give us 10 times the x so 4 times 70 is equal to 280 is equal to 10x we divide both sides by 10 so x is equal to 28. So again, this side right here, we're saying is equal to 28. Okay? Last example, example 7. So another parallelogram. We're looking at the two figures, figure 1 and figure 2, and same setup. What can we compare on figure 1 that is also on the other side of figure 2? So we have the 14 over x, and we have the 20 over 10. We're going to go ahead and multiply diagonally, so 14 times 10, and then we're going to multiply the other diagonal side, which is 20 times x. So it becomes 140 is equal to 20x, divide both sides by 20, and x is equal to 7. So this is the activity that you'll be doing today.